So today we are going to make a charging animation and it's going to consist of three different renders. And right now I'm already in Blender and I've got my HDRI set up right here. It is on 0.5 strength and it is Shanghai Bund. So get that one if you want to use it as well. I've got the cable right over here, which we made in the previous tutorial. And I've also got the iPhone, which is connected of course to the empty. So I'm going to press on one, control alt zero. I'm going to bring it backwards, GZZ, GXX, maybe move the iPhone to the middle. So let's click on the empty. Shift S, cursor to select it. Going to press on Shift A, mesh plane, add a plane, scale it up like this and uh, all the way over there, maybe a little bit more till we reach the thirds, something like this because we've got some more thirds right over there. I'm going to bring this upwards simply by pressing E and Z. Let's see how high that can go. I do believe that something like somewhere over here should be fine. E and Y and let's bring it towards us again to the approximate same length as this one. So let's see, G and why let's bring this all the way over here and this is now a plane that we can use to texture in order to make something look interesting so i'm going into the shader editor press new press a press dot and now we can see this i'm going to bring in a foranoid texture and from the foranoid texture i'm also going to bring in a color ramp Control t on the foranoid texture object into the vector make sure that you're in some type of rendered mode like ev or this one and then we can see what we're doing i'm going to set the f1 to distance to edge and i'm going to decrease the randomness all the way to zero and you'll see what it does actually i'll leave it to one for now plug this into the base color and as you can see we now get some cool square type shapes so something like this and that looks pretty cool but that's not the end of this because what we want to do is basically bring in another color ramp plug this one in there and the color into the roughness and now we get some pretty interesting looking shapes now don't we i'm going to take this black area i'm going to make it slightly less black i'm going to take the white area i'm going to make it a little bit more grayish and maybe this is a little bit too big i'm going to scale it up bring this towards each other increase the metallic and the black one over there. Now let's take the black area, a uh, white area and bring, bring it down a bit. Let's take the black area and bring it up a bit. And the same goes for this one for a second color ramp. Let's take this area aside and let's bring it down. I do want to have some of those reflections and now it looks like this. Of course, we can play around with it until it looks exactly to our liking. And maybe we can also play around with the rotation of this until we get some pretty interesting looking reflections. I kind of like this. Uh, let's go to frame 15. And I want the iPhone to be somewhere over here. And let's see, something like this. Now I'm also going to select the camera and I'm going to click on depth of field. And I'm going to select the empty that's on the iPhone. And right now the iPhone is sharp while the rest is being blurred. And that is exactly what we want. So now I'm just going to animate this iPhone. I am simply going to take it and make sure that we get some of those edges right there. So basically I want this iPhone to start right over here. So I'm going to set a keyframe to this on let's say frame five or six. It should be very fast in the beginning. And then I'm going to frame one and I'm going to bring this upwards and maybe rotate it on the Z axis just a little bit. So let's see what it does. It's coming in and then all the way until frame 48, because I want this animation to be only two seconds, I'm going to rotate it like this. So let's see what it does. All right, very cool. We need to select the Z location and let's bring this down. Because now the Z is going to be done faster than the X, so to speak. Yeah, so we should probably get the X as well, right over there, press A and dot. And this one should move faster as well. So then it's coming in quickly and it's slowing down and then it's rotating around a bit, but it's already stopping and we should probably change some of these rotations. Basically, I'm going to take the Z rotation and we're going to make it fast in the beginning as well. And right over there, it should continue its motion, but here it is already flattened out with the floor. So I'm going to bring this up so the animation continues onwards. So let's see, now it should always be moving a little bit. And we should probably do the same for the Y. So let's have a look at that one. Uh, here it is already standing still, so we have to bring this down just a little bit. And now it just keeps on moving. And uh, we should probably do it as well for the X. And uh, the same goes for the X right over there. That's what it looks like. It's pretty fast. All I'm going to do now is take this camera, go into the timeline. And uh, right here, I guess I want it to be at the correct position. So in frame 10, I'm going to press on I, frame one, press G, Z, Z, and I will bring it right over there. And now it's moving backwards as well. And we should probably want to make this fast in the beginning, uh, just like the other ones. So the Y location is the one that we need. So I'm going to press on this. Make sure that we select the right handle and bring it down because now it's very fast in the beginning and then it slows down over time. I want it to land at the same time as the iPhone. So I'm going to take this keyframe and set it to the sixth. Oof. Yeah, that's better. And all we need to do basically is take this cable, rotate it, 
maybe bring it a little bit closer to the camera as if it's going to enter in. Then I will go over to the geometry node editor. And the thing that we need to animate is this end value right here in the trim curve, as you may remember. I'm going to take this group input and take this empty slot and plug it right into the end. And if we go into the modifier section here, we get an end value that we can actually animate now. And that's way easier than simply going back into the geometry node editor each and every time. So I'm going to use this to animate this cable. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is duplicate this. I'm going to duplicate it, G and Y. And I will also click on the copy button for the geometry nodes. So I've copied it just now, it's now geometry nodes 003. I'm heading over into edit mode, I'm going to delete all of these. I'm actually going to draw a couple of other ones that are approximately the same length as each other. Draw another one like this, and it should always start from outside of the frame, by the way. So now we have different curves oof, coming in, like this. And we should probably animate it by now. So timeline, let's go to frame zero. I'm going to set this to zero as well. Press I, then all the way until frame 48, I'm going to increase this to one. Then go into the graph editor, open this up. We've got a socket right here for the geometry nodes. Uh, let's click on this and this is basically what it looks like. Uh, what we want to have is an inverted S-curve. Uh, so basically I'm just going to take the left and the right handle of this one. Then I'm going to press S and Y, uh, but make sure that it's to bounding box center. So S and Y, and I'm basically going to invert it like this. And now we get an S-type shape. Let's see what it looks like. Oof. Then it's slowing down and then it's speeding back up. So all we need to do is play around with this for however long we want. So it's fast in the beginning. Oof, slowing down and moving fast. The camera should probably move backwards once again. So let's go over to the camera and press I. And then right here, let's move it inwards. And maybe towards this one. Press I. Yeah. So it's slowing down. Oof. Now we only need to animate this cable. Uh, I want this one to animate a little bit slower. So I'm going to set it to zero. Press I. And then right over here to frame 48, it should definitely be at its end position. Uh, let's go to this frame right over here, because we already want to see it when it's on frame 30, you know? That we actually see a cable moving towards this iPhone. And uh, we basically want it to be fast in the beginning and slow down over time. So fast in the beginning, very slow still. I'm going to drag this to the left as well. And it shouldn't really stop. I'm going to bring this down. And I feel like it should be closer to the iPhone already. So what I'm going to do is I'm heading over into the edit mode and simply drag this out to the iPhone a little bit more. Maybe we can even rotate it like on the Y and on the X axis and on the Z axis and play around with this until we get a little bit more close to the iPhone itself. So this is what it would look like. We add a cube, scale it upwards bring in a shader editor, new, press A and dot, delete the principal BSDF, bring in a volume, principal volume, volume into the volume, and now decrease the density to 0.01. And uh, bring this backwards, I want the iPhone to be entirely clean and visible. So let's bring in a area lamp, let's drag it upwards. Let's have a look at where it is, by the way. Let's turn off the cube for now. Uh, I'm going to bring this area lamp right over here, scale it up. And uh, maybe I want to rotate this on the X and rotate this on the Z axis, rotate it on the R axis as well, until we get something that might shine just on the camera a little bit and from the side preferably. So R and Y. So if we increase the power of this, we can maybe bring it even more to the side and we get this cool rim light. It doesn't have to be this strong, it just needs to be visible enough. I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to press RXX 180 and I want to shine it exactly from the other side as well. But this one is going to be a bit more bluish. I might increase the wattage of this and make sure that it only shines on the side and not really on the body of the iPhone. So maybe we can increase or decrease the strength of our HDRI. I'm going to set it to 2, way too much. 0.5 should probably do. So now we get something that looks like this and if we turn back on our cube with volumetric it will look like this which is not entirely what we want so I'm going to have to move it backwards just a little bit so we get the cool blue lighting over there but nothing is interacting with the cube itself so let's take the plane r and x r and y and 90 and maybe block off some light from this side so this is what I'm going to be rendering I'm going to turn on the motion blur and make sure everything looks fine 
Uh, for the next render that we're also going to do in this video, we're going to close up a bit on the iPhone. So let's do this render first, render it out already in a different folder, and then we're going to do the next animation with the camera as well. All right, so now we are going to do the second part. I have made a new save file for this before I render the other one because I didn't want to wait. So I've got my camera right over here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to press dot on the iPhone. I might just simply place my camera right over here. And then I will take this one, make sure it has no keyframes, set the end value to one and basically make sure that it is straight. And this is definitely not straight. So we can go into the geometry node editor, go to rotation and we've got the named attribute into the rotation. But what if we click on rotate instances? So let's set it to rotate instances. Let's plug that in here. And now we can take the Z value and turn this around until it actually fits. All right, so that's what it looks like. Add a little empty right over here. I'm going to make it a sphere. Click on the camera, go to the depth of field, and instead of the original empty, select this empty now instead. And that already looks pretty good if you ask me. So all we need to do now is animate this value in the modifiers. So go to end and it's somewhere like over here. It's still outside of the screen. Uh, let's go to frame nine in this case, because then the iPhone will be here already. Uh, let's click on the iPhone empty because I want to remove all the animations from this point onwards. So I'm going to delete those keyframes and right now all we need to do is go into the cable, go to frame one, press on I, then go to frame, I don't know, 48 and let's plug it straight in there. So let's go over into the graph editor real quick and let's see what's going on here. Uh, we want it to move in fast, so whoop, then it's slowing down and here I want it to be very slow. So I'm going to drag this out, but I want it to be noticeably slow. So right over here, I'm going to place a keyframe on the end value. I'm going to take this one and I'm actually going to make sure that it is almost straight. And then I want it to be very fast from over here. So I'm going to press I on the keyframes once again. And now I'm actually going to set this handle type to free, handle type to free, take this handle type and bring it upwards real quickly like this, G and X, pop. So it's coming in, slowing down, but I don't like this animation just yet. So I'm going to bring this down just a little bit, G and Y, rotate it like this. So it's just going to continue onwards. Click. And in order to make this just a little bit better, I'm also going to animate the camera from frame zero, frame one actually, press one. Then on frame 84, let's just slightly zoom it in and maybe rotate it as well, RZZ, something like this, press I, and let's set it to linear. Very good. And now we also need to render this one out, so create a new folder for this. So let's do the third one as well. Basically, we can go back to our original first animation and make a new save for that and call it the third animation. And then we're in the same environment and all we have to do is make sure that our cable is connected to the iPhone and give it a bit of a wobble. So let's do that right now. All right, so I'm back in the first render that we made and I already saved it as a different file name, so now we have to see. Uh, all we have to do is go into this cable, make sure that we delete these keyframes and let's go to the camera as well. Let's make sure to delete those keyframes on a beautiful position like this. Here we have the cable. We have to do the same thing as we did in the previous one. So go to the geometry node editor and make sure that we add a rotate instances, rotate instances, plug it in here and uh, rotate Z until it is able to fit inside of this plug. Now, naturally we are also going to change the cable itself. So the curve is a bit less nasty and make sure that it is plugged in. Shift S, cursor to select it. And let's make sure that the origin is set to the 3D cursor. And if we place a new empty in here, let's say a arrows empty, I'm going to scale this up. Uh, we can take this, select the empty last, control P, uh, parent it with the empty object, but keep transform. Uh, then select this empty right over here and select this empty, control P, object, keep transform. And now if our iPhone moves, the cable is going to be stuck to this bottom side. And that's basically what we want. Now it doesn't automatically generate a cool looking animation, but that's not a problem because all we gotta do is maybe like rotate it like this, bring it uh, somewhere to the side. Let's, uh, let's make sure that these cables are removed. Let's bring our camera in just a little bit closer and we are simply going to make sure that it gets a slight wobble. I'm going into the graph editor. Let's go over to the animations that are in here 
and basically delete all of those. So delete the keyframes and now we can play around with it. It basically plays a keyframe somewhere. Go to the graph editor, open it up, go to the rotation modifiers. And let's add some noise. And the noise looks like this. It's way too much as always. So we have to increase the skill and decrease the strength to something a bit more reasonable. And that's basically what it looks like. We can decrease the skill, make sure that it's a bit more powerful into like 0.1, but with a very low skill. Zzz, you see, like this, it's now getting power. Copy this, go to the Y rotation, paste it. And same goes for the Z, paste it. And now we get a, okay, let's not do it for the Z. And let's change it on the Y as well, just a little bit scale upwards. So RXX, and let's make sure that the camera is over here. Let's go to the first frame. So let's set this to timeline, frame one, go over here and it's getting power. Press I on the camera. On frame 60, I want to place another keyframe and I want to zoom it in just a little bit. Press I, so it's just moving forward. Control T, linear, it's moving forward. And then it is moving to the side. So RZ, and let's place it all the way, like over there and a little bit downwards as well. So then we can get a cool looking pan animation. Whoop. Whoop. If you really want to make this render a little bit better, you can add lightning made with geometry nodes. I kind of wanted to show you guys how to do it, but I thought it would really extend the course to be very long, even though it's not necessary. Uh, but you can make lightning in geometry nodes very easily. So uh, keep that in mind uh, that if you want to make this look even cooler, tzz, very cool. But we're not going to do that for this course. And here at approximately the end, we also want to move this iPhone outwards, I believe. Uh, so let's press I, let's bring it over here. And on this frame, let's uh, move it towards this side and rotate it as well, maybe. Press I. I want it to move upwards just a little bit, actually. So G and Z, press I. So then it seems like it's kind of rising into the air real quickly. <laughs> Maybe it's a bit too long, but then we're just going to cut it off and start from here. All right, pretty cool, that's it. That's all the three renders that you need for this cable animation. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coop. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You wanna be a boss, do it like I do. Uh.